This is Tron Light Cycle Run, a high-speed launch coaster that lets riders enter the world of Tron. On this episode of How It Works, the hidden engineering behind the ride and effects of Tron Light Cycle Run. This show is sponsored by... Nah, I'm just kidding. It's sponsored by Light Rides, a brand new way to bring home your favorite ride. Right now, members of our new Patreon page can get 10% discount by joining any tier at patreon.com slash amusementlabs. Breaking ground in 2011, the Shanghai version quickly drew attention of all Disney World fans, crossing their fingers in hopes of getting to experience the new shiny ride much closer to home. In 2017, they finally got their answer when Tron Light Cycle Run was announced for the Magic Kingdom, breaking ground in 2018 next door to Space Mountain. With an anticipated opening of 2020, the ride's construction was delayed multiple years, with the show building even being sealed before resuming in late May. Tron officially opened after previews April 4th, 2023. The idea behind Light Cycle Run is for riders to be digitized into the world of Tron to compete in a light cycle race, capturing energy gates to win. The approach to the ride gives riders a stellar view of their upcoming adventure as trains race by. After exiting the station, trains will stop and then launch from the lower level of the structure outside under the large LED illuminated canopy before rising up into the main show building. By the way, these are some of my new exclusive Light Rides boards. To get your hands on one, stick around to the end of the video and I'll tell you how. When guests are ushered into the building, they are led down a long hallway to be digitized into the world of Tron. Attention users, you are about to be digitized into the world of Tron. For your safety in this world. Entering a small room, riders face a floor-to-ceiling screen with projected animations reminiscent of Tron iconography. Suddenly, riders are digitized and the wall suddenly turns into a window to the launch section of the ride. To find out how they did it, let's head down to the lab to learn more. What we're seeing in this effect is a projection onto a special film that can go from being opaque to transparent instantaneously. This film is layered between two panes of glass and is called a Polymer Dispersed Liquid Crystal, or PDLC for short. Within the polymer, there are charged particles dispersed randomly that gives the film its opaque property. However, if we apply a current on either side of the polymer using two transparent conductors, the film becomes transparent as the crystals become aligned, allowing light to pass through. If we want to reverse this process, the film will need a bit more time for the charge to dissipate and the crystals to redisperse, making the film opaque again. This is a really simple and impactful effect that really sells the digitation of guests into Tron. Once inside, there are a lot of lighting effects and cues that take place both on and off the ride. The dark ride lighted indoor section uses a mix of black light but also mainly addressable LED effects like out on the main launch. Addressable LEDs are a combination LED that are controlled by an internal chip that communicates with the rest of the LEDs with other control chips downstream, allowing for real-time control with very little wiring. Outside under the LED canopy, lighting effects receive ghost signals from computers independent of the ride. You can notice that when the sensor controlling the lighting effects is triggered, all standby effects that usually occur on the canopy when there is no train are paused until the train enters the building. Tron Light Cycle Run features seven trains holding 14 riders each in a motorcycle riding position. The restraint of these seats requires riders to straddle the seat before pulling handlebars towards them to actuate a back plate to meet your back and for ankle bars to secure your feet. This mechanically controlled mechanism, while restrictive, is quite unique in how it's mechanically designed. On the train, quick recharge power sources illuminate LEDs on identity disks as well as the wheels of their light cycles, in addition to onboard audio that is powered by these batteries. All this equipment plus the riders on board 
makes these trains quite heavy, and therefore, a fitting propulsion system in order to get these trains up to speed was needed for this ride. Made by manufacturer Vekoma, Tron Light Cycle Run is a launched LSM-powered motorbike coaster. The heavy trains feature a strengthened frame, a brake fin in the middle, and two LSM magnetic receiver yokes. The LSM technology allows for safe, repeatable, powerful, and contact-free ways to propel the train up the building at 60 miles per hour. To understand more about how these trains are pushed, let's head back to the lab to learn more about the launch system on Tron. As I mentioned, Vekoma is the main manufacturer of Tron's coaster elements, and they use intrasys LSM stators for their coasters, including Tron. The ones used come from the slim stator line of LSMs the company makes, a powerful but low-profile LSM fin. What I have here is a small model of the launch track with four LSM stators mounted, two on either side of the center. As you can see, the launch section is also a different structure from the rest of the track because the equipment and extremely tight tolerances these LSM stators need in order to function require enhanced rigidity. In fact, during the launch, these magnets and LSM stators will come within 5 to 7 millimeters of each other as they travel down the launch track. Taking a look at this diagram, this is a cross section of the LSM stator mounted on the track. The heart of the typical LSM stator is the iron core that makes up the winding structure and assists with imparting the magnetic fields. Going around the sections of the iron core are the windings set up in a stacking formation and offset to step the fields as they're energized. Additionally, Intrasys has placed additional magnets under the surface of the stators in order to provide more discrete movements and higher resolution control. Moreover, during the ride should anything happen, the LSMs, when underpowered, act as brakes due to the reverse M properties. According to Intrasys, these LSM stators can push up to 200 kilonewtons per fin at 3000 amps over their lifespan. For power, LSMs usually feed off of supercapacitors rather than tapping into any electrical grid directly. Through certain sections of the ride, the train may need to be physically held or pushed, and that could be done through the brake fin in the middle of the train using friction brakes and pinch-style drive tires along the course. Often I find having a physical model always makes things easier to understand, and it's why I make them for you and why I want you guys to have one. And through the magic of having to order five of these, I have a few left and you can get one at amusementlabs.etsy.com. If you really like them, I'll make more, like coasters and dark rides. And you can also get other LED layouts, and there's even a special Patreon discount of each tier. For example, for just a dollar a month, you can get 10% off anytime by joining at patreon.com slash amusementlabs. And also for new patrons, I'll also be giving one away really soon. Now that we understand the effects, trains, and launch system, we can hop on board to enter the grid. After leaving one of the rides' dual station loading platforms, the drive tires push us out to the launch stretch, parking us with the friction brakes in the exact position needed. The LSMs can also move the train in order to weigh the train, determining how much power it'll need to push through the LSMs to get the train moving up and out into the canopy. Before long, we're high up as we enter the block break, then twisting down left and right before hitting another block break. The sequential straight sections and block breaks allow for the ride to create safe zones in order to move multiple trains at a time through the course safely. Another neat effect during the ride is at the second block break, the leftmost light cycle tires turn orange to make it look like the rival orange team is getting close to you. This, however, is just a simple mirror running along the train simple and effective. After a few more turns and drops, the train whips by projections of Team Orange brushing by you before you reach the finish line covered with more adjustable LEDs in a tunnel effect. Riders then return to the station and can carefully unload from their light cycles and say it with me, exit through the gift shop.
While the movies didn't exactly hold up, Tron's aesthetic with the really stunning LED canopy and intensity has made Light Cycle Run something for all ages and generations, unlocking the thrill seeker in everyone. And that's how it works. If you haven't yet, please subscribe for more deep dives like this, and if you like what we do, you can join our Patreon for early access and more. Don't forget to drop a like down below, and if you've ridden Tron Light Cycle Run, tell us how it was. If you haven't yet, I really enjoy reading what you guys share. Thanks for watching, stay curious, and I'll see you in the parks.